What's going on YouTube family? Welcome to Automotive Life. My name is Lucky and today we're going to give you guys a major update. If you're doing any type of ride share or if you're renting your cars on one of these rental platforms, there are major things that you need to know about. So first we're going to start off with the major news that's going to affect a lot of people watching this video. Now if you're using your car for Uber or Lyft or if you're using it for maybe Turo or if you're doing some sort of food delivery service like Postmates or Amazon delivery, there's something you guys need to know about. Now, currently right now, the automotive industry is seeing record high delinquencies higher than it was back in 2008. Now, when these type of events happen, banks tend to get scared and they go back and they look at the data to see what they did wrong to lead them to this particular situation. Now, as they were going through their books the last year or so, they noticed a really bad trend. They've seen a lot of people using their cars for commercial use, not regular use. So what are they doing to offset this risk? They're going to be changing policies and their loans to make sure that they don't give loans to people that are actually using their cars for any type of ride shares, rental car programs, or things of that nature. Now, if you currently have a car, there are some banks that actually have in their writing, if you're using the car for commercial use, not for regular use, they have the right to repossess your vehicle to protect their collateral. Now, I know a lot of guys are thinking, well, that's not fair. That's not right. I got the loan. It's in my credit. You know, why should the bank want to repo it for me if I'm making my payments? Here's the reason why. Let's say you bought this G-Wagon right here. You paid $100,000 for this car. You put no money down. You bought it in 2021, which was the peak of the market. And for the last, let's say, a year or two, you've been either renting it out on Turo or driving it on Uber. Well, now it's got, let's say, 50,000 miles. You've been paying the bare minimum payments. You owe maybe $90,000. But now when I repo this car and I take it back to the auction, this car with the miles and everything else and the way the book has been going down for car values, this car is worth $50,000. So if they sell this at the auction for 50, guess what happens to the other $40,000 that was part of your loan? It's a deficiency and the banks actually eat that $40,000 of negative equity. Now times this by hundreds of thousands of cars every single month and you can kind of see how this is snowballing out of control. Now this is why banks want to put a limit on what they can do when it comes to lending. Now I did a video about this about six months ago talking about how the banks were starting to talk about changing the rules. Some banks have already implemented this process. So you need to be very careful when you start getting these new loans. If you're looking at maybe buying a new car for doing Uber or doing Turo or something like that, you need to make sure and you ask them, is it okay to use my car for commercial use? Unfortunately, nine times out of 10, they're going to tell you no. My recommendation is find something else, get a different bank. There's a lot of companies out there that will work with people that are doing this. Now, the reason why is traditionally when you get a regular loan as a regular person, they're going to give you maybe a low interest rate. They're going to give you 72 months and they're just going to let you pay the car because regular people maybe drive anywhere from eight to 12,000 miles. That's kind of the regular. Now, if you get a commercial loan, like what I get when I buy my rental cars, you're looking at a much shorter term, anywhere from 36 months to uh, 60 months, a much higher interest. So I'm not paying three or 5%. Usually I'm paying anywhere from six to 12%. And the reason is, is because the banks want me to pay this car down quickly. So this way in a year from now, when I rack up maybe 40, 50,000 miles, I can trade the car in and there's not that much negative equity when it comes to the loan. This is why commercial loans are structured this way to make sure not only do that help the banks, but they help the people that are doing this as a living not get upside down. But unfortunately, there were so many people online telling you get this car for this cheap, get an 84 month loan, no money down, and you can rent these cars out or you Uber or, or Turo, whatever it is, and make a bunch of money doing these side hustles. Now, don't get me wrong. I know a lot of you guys have never been in this industry before, but this is the problem that we're facing now is banks are repoing these cars at record numbers and they're seeing cars that are two years old with 100,000 miles. And now they've basically been fed up with it. A lot of banks that I've talked to are actually going out and repoing cars as as we speak if they know that they can actually see you doing Turo and Uber. Now you guys may be thinking to yourself, well, how can they tell? Believe it or not, all your guys' VINs of what you guys use to drive is all out there on the internet. So they're gonna be searching these websites 
looking for people like yourselves to find your cars. So my advice to you is to call the bank, let them know. Hey, I'm doing Turo, I'm doing Uber, Lyft, whatever it is, Postmates. Um, is it okay if I use my car for this? It's just a side thing. They may ask you to put maybe additional insurance on there. They may ask you to put maybe more money down. Hey, I need you to pay maybe an extra 50 bucks a month to pay down the depreciation of your vehicle. But at least you let the banks know so they're not gonna come after you and repo your car. Now, another thing that we're gonna talk about is the insurance aspect. There are a lot of people out here that are renting cars on Turo and also off the platform without correct rental car insurance. Now, even though Turo has its own insurance and it does cover you, you need to make sure that you get a supplemental commercial policy so this way, if for some reason somebody were to crash crash in your car and they die, their family can't sue you. Turo is not going to pay for that. So you need to make sure you cover yourself. If you're, let's say, driving for Uber or Lyft and you get into an accident or some people in your car get hurt, the insurance companies find out that you're using this car for commercial use, not for personal use. They have the right to not pay that claim. And this is something that comes up a lot. You can look in your guys' forums, look in some of your groups. There are insurance companies that are getting smart and getting hip to this, and they want you to pay the extra premiums to make sure you're covered. I know this sucks. I know this takes a big chunk out of your money, but this is something that you guys need to know about because I don't want to see a lot of people get their cars repoed because they are doing these certain things. Now, banks are all about offsetting their risk. They wanna make sure that their loans are used correctly. They wanna make sure that their collateral is actually secured when it comes to insurance and stuff like that. If you can do those two things, more than likely the banks will not come after you trying to take your vehicles back. Now, if you're looking at maybe expanding your business and doing something else, this is where it gets really tricky because it's gonna get even harder for you to get a loan because a lot of the banks I talk to flat out 100% will no longer do any type of loans if you have any type of Uber or uh, Turo on your actual uh, account. Now you could try to hide it, but what they're gonna do is they're gonna sync your bank account with Plaid. Plaid is gonna let them know if you have any direct deposits from these companies. And as soon as they see that, automatic denial. So if any of you guys have been denied in the last few months and you don't know why, you got a seven, 800 credit score and you can't figure it out, more than likely they probably saw something on your bank statements or on your income, or they ran one of the VINs of your cars and found out that it was actually on either Turo, Uber, Postmates, whatever the case is, and they didn't like what they saw, so they went and go ahead and denied you. Now, I know this is going to suck, and there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be losing their jobs or their side income because of this, and this is why I'm making this video. This is not to scare anybody. This is not to freak everybody out. I know a lot of people think, oh, it's doom and gloom, it's bad stuff, and, and it's all for clicks. This is to let you guys know, so this way you can be prepared and start looking for other sides, or excuse me, other sources of income, because at the end of the day, I understand people gotta make money to feed their families and pay their bills, and that's the most important thing. But at the end of the day, the banks, all they care about is making sure that they secure their money, keep it safe, and secure their collateral. So without butting heads with your bank, see what you can do as far as working with them, and if you gotta get out of the business, you can start planning your exit strategy now, so this way you're secure. And on top of that, to be honest with you, the money you make from Uber is not that great. My friend, I'll put it this way, I can't say the name of his app, but he created an app where you put in your car for Uber, you put in the time you work, everything else that syncs to your app, and it'll tell you calculating wise on how many miles you've driven, what kind of depreciation, what kind of maintenance, how much your insurance is, and then it'll tell you how much you make an hour. And he did this app for about six months. Every single person that was on there Driving here in Vegas, which is a very busy city, was making an average of $2 an hour, and people couldn't figure it out. Well, I'm making a 1000 bucks hour a week. I don't know what you're talking about. I make great money here. And he showed them, well, with miles and depreciation, you're actually losing money on your car. And so Turo or somebody else or hire car or Uber, somebody bought this app and wound up killing it. So he didn't even get it out there for more than six months before someone basically squashed it. People don't wanna know the real numbers. I talk about it on my channel when it comes to the rental car things with Turo. You're really not making any money. If you're renting your car out for 50 bucks, Turo takes 30%, and then you gotta bring your car back, wash it, clean it, and get it ready for the next guy. How much is your time worth? Are you spending two hours picking it up, cleaning it, and washing it? It's just the money is simply not there. I want you guys to start looking for other things to do as well because at the end of the day, these companies are making money off of being middlemen. That's all they are. They just wanna make money off of you're taking all the risk and all the liability by buying an expensive car and driving it and beating it up and putting all these miles and depreciating the hell out of it and they get a percentage 
you know, as long as you're doing rides or as long as you're renting out your vehicle and none of this other stuff matters. So as long as you realize that part, you guys should be fine. But um, let me know in the comment section below, have you guys seen any of this? If your car was repoed, buy a bank, please let us know, share it with the people in the group so this way they can uh, call their banks if they're the same bank that issued their loans. Also leasing companies, every single leasing company is the exact same way. BMW Financial, Volkswagen, um, Ford, uh, the motor credit leasing, there's a bunch of these ones. All of these ones have clauses in there where you cannot use your car for commercial use. Take the time, pull out your contract. And if it is, you better go refinance it ASAP just to protect yourself. But anyways, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. We try to answer every single one for the first hour of the video. And make sure you stay till Friday. I have an absolute insane video. We're gonna be talking about what's currently going on with the auto loan sector. Like I said, we officially reached a point higher than what it was in 2008. And this is what I've been screaming from the hilltops for the last year and a half, and everybody thought I was crazy, and it doesn't really matter how it's gonna affect this. This is the major domino that's gonna topple the whole entire industry. Also, I'm gonna make a major announcement during that video as well. So make sure you guys come check us out Friday, and have a good one.